was a disaster. I didn't get enough subscribers. I need to get more views and I need to get more subscribers. I gotta beat Logan Paul. I mean, my name's Aaron Paul. Logan Paul's going down. PewDiePie, well, this is Fleming Pie. I gotta have more subscribers. What do you think we can do? I think you have to look better. Yeah. Me look better? Is that possible? Yeah, of course it is. Okay, it's well. Make you look better. Make, do your magic, do your magic. Okay? Yeah, do your magic, guys. Brush your teeth first. Oh, brushing your teeth, that's a good idea. Brushing your hair. Oh, brushing my hair. I thought I just had to put that thing on. Okay. Yeah, that should be good. That's not the first thing up there, I think. Okay? Yeah. Okay, what else? Teeth are all right. What else do you think? Yes. Oh, that feels much better. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get those, get the stuff off the shoulders there. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Good. Is that looking good? Yep. Yep. Oh, I'm okay. Fantastic. Okay. Good. High five. Thanks. Very good. Whoa. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's get this videos done. Yeah. Woo. Hello. Hope you're doing well. We're gonna do a few things today. Uh, one of them is look at a little bit of news here um, about Python. Second thing is uh, go over a different way of printing out some strings. And third is some extra challenges for you. So let's get started here with some news. Um, not huge news, but uh, something interesting there. They've finally, after probably about 10 years or more, they've released the last version of Python 2. So Python 2 has sort of been our legacy um, language that sort of stuck around for many, many years. Um, obviously, I've been teaching you Python 3, um, which is sort of the future. Python 2 is the past. Um, and so finally, uh, they're basically saying, hey, we're not going to update it anymore. So you need to move on to Python 2. That's always the hardest thing, right? When you go from one version to another version, um, it's just you know, the, the sort of momentum, the, uh, the the inertia that's behind it is kind of tough. Um, people had libraries that only worked in Python 2, um, and they needed to sort of move things over to Python 3, and obviously there was resistance. So, like I said, it's been about 10 years, and so finally Python 2 is dead, if I can say that. Um, but yeah, it's gone. Anyways, moving on. One thing that I want to show you today is an easier way to print out strings. Um, now, just to sort of run through a, like an example for you, uh, you know, let's just say here, let me go up into Python, where am I here? There we are. So if I wanted to say, pr let's just say name equals Fleming, oops, make sure I put that into strings. Um, can't type this morning. And then let's say my mass equals, now this is going to be in kilograms and I can't remember. I'm going to say I'm 80 kilograms. Okay. And then if I wanted to print this out, you know, you could say my name is, and then I have to space, then I'd have to concatenate name, and then start that, make sure I put that space is, is Fleming and I am, very personal here. Uh, oops, see, and I forgot that, there we go. And then I'd have to concatenate, and I'd have to cast it into a string, my mass, and uh, concatenate, and then do the space, kilograms. Something like that, right? I would have to type out all those concatenations there and hope I did it right. Print it out. I did. Okay. Cast that into a string and so on. Okay. There is a bit of an easier way um, and it's called the string format operator. So there's a little bit of notes here, but pretty straightforward. So the idea, um, and this might be familiar for a few of you who have worked with C, okay, in the AP Computer Science Principles class that I teach. Um, and, and the idea is that we can put sort of what I call placeholders in. Um, so this example here, we'll go back and show an example in a minute there, or use it here. Um, percent S, right, refers to the string. So it's just holding the spot inside the string, saying, I'm going to put another string in here. Same thing here, right? Percent D, it says, hey, I'm going to put a decimal number in there. Notice I don't have to do all the pluses. I don't have to end the string and then add on another string and so on. Okay. In terms of the uh, syntax, I have to put that percent again there. So it's pretty easy to remember because you've got to have these percents for the placeholders, okay? And then that percent there, and these simply go in parentheses, and then you could put in, in this case, sort of hard coding in uh, the name and their mass, okay? Now these percent D, percent S, 
what they refer to is um, to like the string, okay, to an integer, to a decimal. I mean, there's a bunch of other ones down here as well. You probably don't need to worry about it. Um, but these two would be, the, well, three, I guess, would be the most important ones, right? Those are just the placeholders for those values, okay? So if I go back, um, well, I'll just leave that. I'll just fix it up myself here. Um, so this, instead of this long thing here, I would still simply use print. Um, and then my name is, instead of ending the string and having to concatenate, I would just go percent %s, okay? And then, um, and I am, and then again, just percent. Now I could percent, percent %d, whoops, sorry, percent %i, right, it's an integer. And then I would just end it, oh, sorry, kilograms. There we go. And then what I do is I put a percent there, and then in the bracket, this would be name, comma, mass. And then just clean it up like that. Yep. So then that will do the same thing. So you can see that it's a lot easier, first of all, to type, okay? And then it's a lot uh, sort of cleaner as well, right? You're not opening and, or, you know, starting and, and uh, ending strings constantly throughout it. So you might want to play around with that and use that format. Um, it will work. Obviously, the order matters, right? So if I just copy this, might give me an error, right? If I try to do mass before name, right? It's gonna give me an error there because I can't, it says like the percent I format as number is required not a string, right? So it makes sense there. So yeah, I mean, the order does matter um, in terms of you putting them in, okay? But uh, the big idea is that you can sort of simplify your print by using this string uh, format operator, okay? So use that if you'd like. Like I said, it, it's just, you know, this is a, a beast to type, even though it's not necessarily that many or that much less in terms of typing. It's just a pain to start and stop those strings. So something to keep in mind. All right, uh, yeah, like I said, these guys, you, I mean, there's a bunch of other ones, but uh, you don't have to really worry about these ones too much, okay? Just those top three or four are probably what you need. All right, uh, terms of problems, okay. Two little problems to keep you going. One, easy, easy, easy. Second one, a little bit more challenging. So it's an easy warm up. Write a program to calculate the length of a string can be any string. The only rule is you cannot use um, the len function, okay? That would be much too simple, right? Just put this, you know, put len around a string, hey, there it is, okay? Um, so, but just think about iterating through, right? And then counting up um, how many items in there. And I don't care, spaces, right? Those are characters as well. So spaces and punctuation would, would count, okay? The second one, a little bit more challenging, a palindrome checker, okay? And so a palindrome, right, is a word or phrase that reads the same way forwards as it does backwards. So simple examples here, Anna, Civic, Kayak, Level, Madame, Mum, Noon, Race Car, those can all be read backwards. So A-N-N-A, -N -N -A, and if I go from the other side, A-N-N-A, -N -N -A, okay? Civic, same thing, C-I-V-I-C. Doesn't matter if you read it left to right or right to left, okay? So um, your little program, and there's kind of two, two types here, and I, I'll mention the second one here. Um, the user should basically be able to enter the word, okay? And uh, your program, your algorithm, will check to see whether or not the word is a palindrome, okay? So like in the example um, below here, capitalization should be ignored, okay? So if they type it in with a capital, you should reconfigure it so that it does it lowercase, okay? So this example here, welcome to my palindrome checker. Sure as if it's a palindrome, please enter your word. Okay, so I entered the word kayak. And even though it is capitalized, okay, congratulations, your word is a palindrome. Okay, so it recognizes, even though kayak served with a capital K, that that one was a palindrome. So you can obviously use these guys for a check, okay? Second one, I put in Fleming. Uh, sorry, uh, your word is not a palindrome. Would you like to check it again? So, I mean, you might want to put that in so you could check multiple times, right? Put it into some sort of loop there. So if you get that, give you a four to five for it, okay? Now, if you want a little bit more of a challenge, palindromes don't just have to be 
single words, okay? They can be phrases. And so this little phrase here, I did, did I, um, you know, is a palindrome. So if you read it this way and then and or read it backwards, it is the same. Now, what you have to do, and this is why it makes it a little bit more challenging though, is that palindromes tend to ignore spaces, punctuation, and obviously the capitalization as well. Okay, so yeah, when you when you deal with something like this, you might have to strip or remove um, items that characters that are not um, um, just alpha, right? They're not just letters. So think about that, like my gym, okay? But again, you've got to remove that space. Red rum, sir, is murder, so on. Okay, all of these would be considered palindromes, but obviously the spacing and the um, uh, punctuation uh, are not included, okay? So, example down here, so if you get five out of five, I should be able to paste in a Toyota, raced fast, safe car, a Toyota. That, amazingly, is a palindrome, okay? Um, again, removing all the spacing, removing all the capitalization, removing the um, exclamation marks and so on, commas, okay, the punctuation there. So that will be your other little check, okay, or your other uh, sort of complication to that program, okay? So you can use that check to see if it works out, um, but that's, that's sort of the five out of five, okay? So if you're happy with just the four out of five, uh, do do this up here. If you were looking for that challenge, make sure that you can do uh, it can handle palindromes such as these. Now the last thing there's going to be, and I won't show it here, um, is there's a little, and I'm going to, I'm using air quotes, you can't see me, but quiz. Um, so there are some multiple choice questions, and that would be our typical quiz that we would do. Um, I suggest trying to answer them with uh, without doing, uh, you know, without looking at your notes and so on. Try to do it first time with that. And then if you want to double check your answers before you submit it, you can, um, you know, obviously go through your notes. But do your best to sort of figure them out and then maybe, you know, pull up Python and, and uh, check check your answers. I'm not going to worry about that. Um, but yeah, do, do your honest best uh, to go through it once and then sort of give yourself an internal mark. Hey, do I really understand this? And then go back and, and uh, double check your answers and make any corrections if you need to. Don't submit it until you do that process, okay? Uh, I don't know exactly. It doesn't seem to... Python, or sorry, Edmodo was nice. I could actually put the answers in, and so it would check right away. Um, this one, it doesn't look like I can do that in Teams, so I'll have to sort of manually mark it. Um, man, I gotta do some work. Um, but yeah, I, I, it, you know, hand in your best result, okay? To hand in your, hand in your checked answers. Don't hand it in uh, until you've sort of made sure that you've done your best there. Okay, so yeah, so the, the three things, mess around with, um, you know, that, that string format operator, just see how it works, because like I said, it's, it's nicer than doing all that concatenation generally. Second, do these two little programs, okay, one very simple, and you can put them together on the same one, uh, I don't mind, and that's what you'd submit there. And then in Teams, you should be able to find, um, it will be on a separate assignment, it will say quiz, um, and, and that one you can do in Teams there, and uh, it's 10 multiple choice questions to do with strings, and uh, you can use, use the computer, like I said, give it an honest effort first, then use the computer to check, and then submit those. Okay, so hopefully that will keep you well, reasonably busy for the week. And uh, let me know if you've got any problems. I'm always willing to help. Um, you know, I've, I'll try to put up some suggestions too, maybe for the palindrome checker later in the week. And uh, hopefully you can get those done. All right. So good luck with those. And let me know if you need some help. Bye-bye.